It's a mixture of being self-conscious. Uh, it's a mixture of this new social media world that we live in yes. because we see a lot of perfection on social media. However, I think whether a woman receives services, whether a woman is getting cosmetic procedures, there's beauty in everyone as they age. There's just right. something natural about aging and aging gracefully that just gives you that like the most absolute beauty. Anything that we do to ourselves, I think we should only enhance yes. our natural beauty. Thanks for tuning in to Conversations with Betty Lamar, coming to you live from the Bluff City. And now, your host, Betty Lamar. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Joining me today is Tolka Fischer, school director at Pro Aesthetics Training Center. We're talking about the benefits of healthy skin care and cosmetic procedures that reduce the signs of aging. Hi, Terika. Welcome to Medical Talk. Thank you so much for having me, Betty. You know, I'm so very proud of you. Um, just want to start with that. You know, I'm just so proud of you for, um, you've always had a dream to have your school and knowing that you have that school, I'm just so very proud of you. But I have so many women that said, you need to have Tarek on your show because her complexion is absolutely flawless. Thank you. But before we talk about how you keep yourself so beautiful, for the rest of us, you know, I'm 25 now. <laughs> Eventually I'm gonna be 30 and I wanna know how to, you know, keep it together. So tell us who Terrica Fitzgerald is. Who am I? That has always been the most difficult question. And I think that's because my personality, I don't fit in a box. Okay. And uh, I typically try to evolve or change as necessary. Uh, oh, for the most part, I would have to say that I'm a free spirit. I'm a learner. I'm a teacher. I like and enjoy sharing information, and I love to see other people grow. Okay. So let me ask you this: um, aesthetics mm -hmm. is that the correct? Mm -hmm. That's the correct pronunciation. Okay, because I hear some people use the word to describe like a, an esthetician, mm -hmm. esthetician. What is the proper? Or does it matter? It doesn't matter. Uh, the only difference between the both pronunciations is one is European and the other is typically American. So there's it's, there's no wrong terminology with that. Okay. It's your preference. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your preference? Uh, aesthetics, esthetician. Esthetician. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. Now, what is the difference between uh, esthetician and a dermatologist as relate to the skin care? So um, typically the dermatologist, he's the physician of the skin okay. and we're the therapist of the skin. So anything that goes into diseases or aggressive acne, uh, medications, prescriptions, there are, that, that's the area that you would want to lean more so towards a dermatologist. For an esthetician, we're the therapist. So we're the person that you see on the regular basis for your skincare treatments. Okay. Your dermatologist, uh, typically, they're the ones who write you through the prescriptions and they diagnose you. We're the ones who you follow up with to receive your treatments, to make sure that you're receiving your um, natural skincare, to make sure that you're using the right products, and we're therapists as far as everything that's going on in your life okay. because those factors do affect your skincare as well. Whether you live, live a high stress life, whether your diet is appropriate for you, sometimes something as small as being a cheese lover can affect your skincare. Okay, now, this is a question. I always think back, you know, when I was much, much younger, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know about, you know, skincare Most routines. Most of us didn't. So at what age should a, I'm, in this case, we just say a female because I'm talking about me. Mm -hmm. At what age should a female start a skincare, skincare routine? You can start, a young, young woman can start a skincare routine as early as the age of 14. Okay. And I say that because once you start, you know how we are, we're programmed. <laughs> so if you start someone as early as 14, doesn't mean that they have to use anti-aging products, doesn't mean that they have to use acne products, doesn't mean that they have to use anything aggressive. But as long as you get them started with a regimen to 
regularly cleanse their skin and moisturize their skin and protect it with an SPF, then as they grow, they'll evolve with their skincare as their lifestyle changes, as they age, or they have these different things that they need to address. So I would say 14. Typically 14 is about the age that young ladies begin getting facials as well. Really? Mm -hmm. Is that what we call self-care? <laughs> well, I think some moms do it so that they can get them started. You know how once upon a time you had that grandmother who was probably 70 years old and she would spend her time in her mirror Yes. and she had to have her <laughs> special cream. Exactly. She only used her a same cleanser. A lot of older women had that cold cream. Cold cream used to be yes. the thing back in the day. So. Um, that's just something that sort of falls in line with self-care and as you begin to build on it and as you grow, it, it's just, it's natural. It becomes natural to you. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. We're going back to, say, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm 18 now, right? Right. So, if I, had I started at 14, mm -hmm. now at 18, and then at, say, 50, 60, by starting early, does it really have an effect on the skin or is, could some of it be genetics? Some of it is definitely genetics. DNA has a lot to do with it. Okay. Some people are naturally born with great skin. Some people happen to inherit skin issues. Okay. So yes ma'am, DNA has a lot to do with it. However, starting at an early age to take care of your skin and care for your skin, you begin that early awareness. So that is also good as well, but DNA does have some effects on the skin. Okay, so it, well then that would be just like a person that is prone to have uh, acne. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Most okay. definitely. Is acne. that normally genetic as well, or just what hormonal is that? and genetic? Really, mm -hmm. even hormonal. at a young age. Mm -hmm. Yes, really? most definitely. Okay, and we could even have acne as an adult. There's some women who have never had a problem with acne before in their lives, mm -hmm. but as they hit some form of a hormonal imbalance then they have adult acne. That okay. happens frequently. Okay, well look, we're gonna take a break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, I wanna talk a little bit about collagen, cause now everything on TV is collagen, collagen, collagen. Yes, so we're gonna talk about that cause I want you to tell us the benefits of that. Okay. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We're talking about the benefits of aging gracefully. GHS-TV started in 1982, and it was just a couple of cameras, a couple of on-air personality, and it's really grown into what you see today. It's a multi-million dollar studio with top-of-the-line technology. Being able to operate you know, all of the machinery in the control room, uh, being able to use all of our software and hardware that we have around the studio uh, is a great skill because this is top-of-the-line equipment. I feel like this class has brightened my horizon. It's something that I never thought I would be doing, um, especially as a student. GHS TV is probably one of the most hands-on experiences a student will ever get in their lifetime. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Nothing really has just the vibe that we have here. Especially after you finish, you get a real rush of, wow, I just did that. By the time a student graduates from Germantown High School, they will know pretty much every position there is from producing to directing um, to on-air work. You learn time management, you learn organization, you learn how to work with people, how to better communicate with people. We put a lot on them and they have to be able to have the responsibility and the knowledge to get everything that we ask them. I had very little experience. Uh, so in the past three years, the skills that I've learned have, have absolutely exponentially grown. The class has actually helped me figure out that I want to go to college for journalism. When a student graduates, they are the best possible version of themselves that they can be. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Medical Talk. I'm Betty Lamar. My guest today is Terika Fitzgerald. And we're talking about skin care and aging gracefully. Now, Terica, uh, when we left the last segment, I mentioned collagen. Because you know how it seemed like every year we're talking about there's something new 
there's something different. Yes, so I was so excited to have you on the show today because I know you would be able to break down uh, because I spoke to somebody that sell, mm -hmm. you know, like these little products, like, yes. you know, and of course they collagen, collagen, collagen. So I'm like, I'm not gonna buy anything until I talk to Terry. <laughs> so let's talk about what, is, what are the benefits of Collagen, is that the correct word yeah, for that? Yeah, collagen, is, that's correct. Okay. So would you be speaking of orally or something to apply topically? Oral, orally. I guess. What they have, you, she said you can put it in your smoothies, smoothies and yeah. all that. Okay, oral collagen. So, you know, with anything that we ingest, we're only getting a certain percentage of it because it has to go through our system, oh, right? Okay. So anything that you ingest, you're going to have to ingest it on a regular basis. So if you're wanting to take collagen supplements, you're going to need to take those supplements daily. Okay. Uh, so just one collagen shot here or there. It's good to have, anything is good to give to your body, but if you're looking for results, you need to do um, or use something for at least 28 consecutive days. Really? Yes, and then if you love those results, you can't stop. <laughs> you have to continue to ingest it. Like Botox? Pretty okay. much, yeah, there's All just right. the difference with Botox. You know, it has more lasting power than something you'll ingest orally. Okay. Because yeah. it's being deposited gotta, directly gotta, into the skin. Yeah, we have a whole segment we're going <laughs> to talk about that. I love I'm the needles now. About that. <laughs> so, um, now, since you mentioned about, um, you know, putting it in the smoothie, that obviously is another way to get it. And what is mm -hmm. that? You can also take the pill supplements, the okay. pill form, or you can receive collagen injections. So if a person's use for collagen is something in regards of the face or yes. a particular body part, then you can always go, if you want it specifically for that place and you're okay with needles, you can definitely get the needle. Otherwise, if you're wanting to use the collagen to uh, supplement your diet for your bones and just your natural skin health, then okay. you can take the collagen orally, whether it's by liquid or by tablets. Okay, so when you say inject the body with it, what does it do to, and what body parts are we talking about? <laughs> now you can pretty, pretty much get different forms of collagen. They can go different parts of the body. To do what though? So what it will do is stimulate your natural collagen. You know, okay. as we age, our collagen is depleted with age. True. That's just naturally. Okay. Uh, and if there's one area in particular that you wanted to focus on, so there's one treatment that you can receive on the lower body with collagen, a particular form of collagen, and they utilize it to kind of plump up certain areas. Certain really? women may have cellulite and they want to smooth it out. Some women want rounder hips and they don't want the hip dip. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Just as well if you, um, wanted the collagen for your bone structure to plump up your cheeks. You know, I can recall looking at my pictures when I was in high school, I had a fluffy face. It's not as fluffy. <laughs> so I have to have some help every now and then. So that can be stimulated with the massage from a facial, or you can take oral supplements, or you can go directly to the injections. So what it will do it will stimulate your natural collagen. So once that collagen is injected into the skin, it stimulates your natural collagen. Just as well, you can receive uh, hyaluronic acid injections as well. So hyaluronic acid is something that's very great for, it's great for the skin, and it, it does the same thing typically as the collagen does. Okay, well speaking of that, because I didn't ask, what motivated you, because ever since I've known you, you've always been about uh, beauty and skin care. Yeah. But when and how did that become a passion for you? When did you know this was what you wanted to do? When it applies to beauty, when it applies to beauty, usually most beauty treatments, people are relaxing. Okay. And, you know, prior to it, I was in the health care field. Right. And, you know, there's a difference when you're doing health care and then when someone is having an elective surgery. Yes. And the health care industry, sometimes we come across, because that's your industry as well. So we come across people who are ill. They're dealing with things that they don't want to deal with. They're they not always, happy. Yeah, they're no, they don't always feel good. However, there's this one physician who practices in Midtown Memphis, and he does... Um, he does still instruct at UT, uh, the cosmetic surgeons. I worked with him for quite a while and I learned so much from him. Okay. What I noticed when I made that transition to working in his office is that no matter how bruised or 
not so cute they were leaving the office because these women came to have an elective procedure. Yes. They still had huge smiles on their faces. Yes. So he did procedures from the neck up. Uh, he's an otolaryngologist and he did plastic surgery procedures from the neck up. So he would do things as far as tapering the ears. You know, some people have the ears that sit out <laughs> and that makes some people self-conscious. So he would kind of taper them down. He would do things to noses. But what I loved and I, what I loved about working with him he didn't jump to take everybody's money. If he spoke to them during a consultation and they didn't appear to be mentally healthy, <laughs> he would not do the service. Okay, so people get addicted to it, right? They get addicted and just as well, what he explained to me is that people sometimes have procedures or do things for their body for other people and not themselves. Yeah, and that's, that's really not a, a good thing because no. to me, I, whatever I do, I do for Betty Lamar. That's right, and you should. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and nothing else really matter. If I'm happy, mama is happy, right? Right, and okay. that's the way it should be. Unfortunately, we can look at television these days, and since a lot of these cosmetic procedures are so quick and easy to get, we see celebrities who we once thought they were beautiful as yes. they were, and then yes. now we see them and they're not as attractive because they've done some of these things that made them look more more artificial rather than just highlight their natural features. Now, speaking of that, mm -hmm. after this break, when we come back, we're going to get into some of the procedures. Okay. Because we're right, because there's so many people out here now that look like, oh my, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more Medical Talk. Hi, I'm Angelica reporting live from Lamar Productions in East Memphis. Thanks for watching. Let's talk with Betty Lamar. Betty is renowned for her successful medical talk show, and now you're invited to watch the space for her new production, Let's Talk, which is laser focused on issues affecting young girls and women in the community. Now, back to your host, Betty Lamar. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. My studio guest is Terika Fitzgerald, and we're, and during this segment, we're talking about cosmetic procedures for aging gracefully. And Terika, you know, every woman, whether she admit it or not, if she really care, she wants to age gracefully. Because, you know, I'm just going to be real. Because that's what we do. That's right. Uh, it seems like women have uh, more concern and have to be more concerned about aging than men. Like when men get older, you know, we say, oh, they look so, what's the word? distinctive and mm -hmm. all of that. And they, they look at women like, how dare you look like moms, right? <laughs> right. So I'm like, hey, this not fair. But why is it like that? Why is it a psychological thing that women feel like they can't just age um, without feeling like they have to as we get ready to go into uh, cosmetic surgeries? Because most of us do that, I think, because we're trying to Impress. Keep it together. Yeah. Is it about our what men like or what we really like? I think it's a mixture sometimes. Sometimes we can become self-conscious because we can look at our old selves and see that we are aging. Okay. However, what I'm learning and what I hear from most men these days, being that so many uh, people are having these procedures, they're saying that everyone's starting to look alike. Yes. Like all the bodies are starting to look alike. All yes. of the faces are the, like the lips and the cheeks, everything's being sculpted alike. So no one has that uniqueness anymore. Uh, so now I'm noticing men are starting to come away from that desire of wanting that because it's becoming yeah, so typical fake now. perfection. Yes. Yeah, so I think more so women are starting to do some things to impress other women. Oh, yeah. Because other women pay attention to you a little bit more. Like, some like men wearing don't a really... pair of nice shoes. Exactly. We know we have to put pretty shoes on, on TV, <laughs> right? Right. Because right. what's the first thing women going to do? You look at your shoes. Okay. <laughs> Same thing look with at your, your shoes. Looks. Right. Okay. Absolutely. So I think women are starting to do more of these things to themselves to impress other women. Okay. Because men, you know. They don't care. They don't care so much <laughs> about all of that. You know, you can have some of the basic things together and they're going to love you anyway if they're going to love <laughs> like you. Like a job. <laughs> right. A school. Right. <laughs> right. So I think women are doing more of these services now to impress other women okay. uh, and also self-conscious, you know, being self-conscious about themselves. Because if you have a friend 
who has this certain look and mm -hmm. you notice they're getting attention, that can bother some women, yeah. you know? And I, so I think it's a, it's a mixture. It's a mixture of being self-conscious. Uh, it's a mixture of this new social media world that we live in yes. because we see a lot of perfection on social media. However, I think whether a woman receives services, whether a woman is getting cosmetic procedures, there's beauty in everyone as they age. There's That's just right. something natural about aging and aging gracefully that just gives you that like the most absolute beauty. Anything that we do to ourselves, I think we should only enhance yes. our natural beauty. Yes, Jennifer. I don't think you should wipe out <laughs> like Ooh, your natural like, beauty. Who is that? Right. Is that? I right. Think that's her, and then wait to see, look at the credits. <laughs> exactly. To see if that exactly. Was her. And then I think also as far as when a, a, a woman is a parent. I think when you deplete some of these natural looks, then your kids are gonna wonder, who did I get this from? Yeah. Because like everything, as far as your natural attributes, everything has changed. Exactly. You know, so then you, you have to consider how you're making that child feel. That child is gonna feel like they have to do things so they can look perfect like mommy. Yeah, and you know what? You're most certainly right about this when you look at um, movie stars, for instance, it's like they do it for the women. Mm -hmm. They're all competing against each other. And I just can't understand that because I just love being Betty Lamar. That's right. You know, I have a few things that, you know, I can probably nip and tuck here and there, but overall I'm happy with with me yeah, because I'm happy with who I am. And I think you should be comfortable in your own skin because... Young women need to know that. Yeah, they need to hear you, that. You should be comfortable in your own skin because, I mean, think about it. I was working at a facility once and there was a woman, she was older and her body parts were new, <laughs> you know? So it's just some things, so it's okay to get, uh, you do your tweaks here and there, but then you have to think about how everything is gonna be balanced as a whole. Yeah, so right. naturally, have, whether you wanna have a cosmetic procedure, whether you wanna age more gracefully and you wanna have procedures and you just wanna accentuate your natural features, I think when you accentuate your, your natural features, I think you have the better results. Okay, let me ask you this, because you know, before we know it, 30 minutes is gone. So we're going back to the, we're in, into the procedures and we're going back to Botox. So what's best for, cause it seems like with men and women, this area here seems to always be the sticky point for everybody. What does gravity normally move that first? Because we move our, our eyes and our brows with our, expressions when we speak oh. just as well as when we squint our eyes and then just as well going a little bit further down in the optic area if you know anyone who's almost all their lives rub their eyes aggressively that causes the drooping of the eyelids so just as well that causes a problem too okay now in this last minute I want you to give the audience the viewers your the name of your school again, your website, any contact information. Well, the name of the school is Pro Aesthetics Training Center, which I also operate uh, Skin Per Se, as well as Sumati Spa Consulting and Wellness. We're at 1100 East Brooks Road. You see the flags, turn in, that's us. Uh, we offer education, continuing education for those women who have their aesthetics license, who are licensed already. and. Um, uh, we offer special services for teenagers, for teens who want to receive their aesthetics license before they graduate. That is so, so very wonderful. So very wonderful. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being my guest. Thank you and for having I me. And I want to thank you for just caring about others and just not being a female hater. Because <laughs> no. that's basically, because you've always been very supportive of me. You've been all you've always been supportive of me as well. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, you've been a role model. Thank you.